Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Ben Reeve and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is your round six preview of the Cats versus the Swans. Uh, and the game is our first home game at GMHBA or Canadian Park this season uh, on Saturday night, 7.25. Uh, it's going to be a cracker. I think two teams that are really key to get a win here, Geelong really wants to uh, maintain their dominance uh, or grand final recent dominance over the Swans and the Swans are surely ready for a little bit of payback. Uh, how am I feeling though? Uh, pretty good actually. Yeah, very. Um, I'm going into this one strangely and maybe scarily a little bit confident. Um, two and three record the Cats. I don't know, I'm just starting to feel like it's beginning to click. Yes, every, another week goes by, another couple of medium-term injuries seems to be the theme of this season, doesn't it? But it just seems to be that the style of play and some of those players that were struggling early, they're starting to find it again. Uh, and that's just filling me with a bit of confidence. Uh, Hawkins is starting to get a bit fitter. A few of those uh, sort of, I wouldn't call them fringe players, uh, but some of those like your Brad Closes and your Tom Atkins and and sort of that kind of group of players are starting to really find things again. And Max Holmes is starting to realise he could be the best player in the AFL. More on that a little bit later. Uh, so I'm feeling very confident that things are starting to fall into place for the Cats to make a good run in the middle part of the season. Um, I think it's a turning point game for the Catters. I think this could be the game, uh, while I'm confident, um, and I think we'll win it and, and we'll, we'll go 3-3 three and three to finish round six. Um, I think it's also a, a bit of a danger game too if we, if we drop it. Um, two, and, two and four is not a great look. And if we'll, we can keep saying it's a long season, but um, there's a lot of us, generally a lot of the story of, the, of an AFL season gets told in the first six or seven weeks of a season. Uh, the top eight is almost set, almost set around that time. There's usually one or two changes still to play out after round seven, but uh, or round six. Um, but yeah, I think we'll be. I'm. I'm very certain. I'm. I'm not going to take it to the bank. I'm not betting the house on this one. But uh, I am going into Saturday night supremely confident that we'll get the job done and we'll be three and three. I think we'll still be outside the eight uh, at the end of this round because it's a very very close top eight this year. Uh, I think there'll be a, a game or two separating. Uh, first and eighth on the ladder. I think we'll just be a game out. Healthy, healthy percentage, which is great. And I think that's probably what we want to look at a little bit more than the win-loss column uh, in terms of really saying or telling a story about how we're going this season. I think um, our percentage is actually better than it was after five rounds last year. So it's a strange season, this one. Um, but but stay on the ride because uh, I think it'll be, a, it'll be a different path to... I say glory, uh, but it'll be a different path to the finals. Uh, I will say finals uh, in 2023 than it was in 2022. Uh, it's a turning point game for another reason. I think this is the game that you see uh, the next superstar of the AFL arrive. You might have seen a little teaser of it last weekend. Uh, the, the, the gentleman I'm speaking of is Max Holmes, and he is ready to uh, announce himself to the AFL world, and I believe it's going to be this Saturday night. I think you are going to start seeing a string of best on ground performances from this lad. Um, he's ready to go. I think it was a bit, you know, just finding his feet a little bit like a few others in those first few rounds of the season. But um, I think once the team starts to click around him, I think we'll start to see uh, Max Holmes just really explode upon the AFL uh, league and uh, AFL league, ATM machine. Uh, wait for it. It's coming. It's coming, I'm telling you now. Uh, and maybe one or two other. I think uh, what we need is just one or two other little pieces to fall into place. And I think this team will be up absolutely purring uh, to use a cat's pun there uh, now the teams this week have been announced Gary Rowan comes back uh, uh, Jonathan Segler comes back for I don't know how many games he's played with the cat is now four something like three four five something like that not many anyway he seems to be that sort of backup sort of ruckman that's probably his lot in life a bit of um, you know he'll get a game when he can but um, as long as Ray Stanley's fit and firing he's going to be the second choice ruckman I hope I hope he puts a lot of pressure on Ray Stanley and and um, we walk away from this game and think, geez, uh, Jonathan Segler's a bit of a gun, isn't he? Like 40 hit-outs and kicked a couple of goals and was damaging. Um, I don't think we'll see that, but I, I hope we do. I hope every Geelong player on our list, when they get opportunities, they make the most of them. So I don't want to have cracks at players at all. I, I want the best for all of them. I don't want to I don't want to name a bloke and then spend the next two hours giving him a hard time on the field. It's not the way I want to go about it. I, I want all these all these players to wear the hoops to come out firing and, and give it a red hot crack and give themselves a chance um, at being part of that next group. 
uh, that will take us uh, deep into the finals. Um, out comes uh, Tyson Stengel which, uh, and Reece Stanley, which we, we kind of know about through the week. Um, looking at some more medium-term injuries for them. Four to six weeks, the official reports at this stage are saying. But as we all know, as Geelong supporters, that can that can change. can change in a good way if you're Tom Stewart. Uh, and so for some others, it's, uh, it just goes on and on and on and on. Um, I think we've got um, a couple of two-week confirms on the list as well. I think Jed Buse is having another week off from his concussion. Um, was expecting him to come back this week and, and line up on uh, Tom Papley, but that's not going to happen. Um, Jack Henry is a 2B confirmed. Sam Manningola is still a 2B confirmed. And uh, Toby Conway, who hasn't debuted yet, our promising young ruckman, he's a 2B confirmed as well. Uh, I think Shannon Neal's on the injury list too, so I'm not sure how what's going on with him. I think I thought he did come back at one point, but seems to be injured again, so um, he might have been an opportunity to come in for Rhys Stanley, if not for his injury. Um, so uh, an emergency this week. Uh, well, the sub's yet to be named. The medical, well, not medical sub, whatever the sub is called these days. Uh, that'll be out of Brandon Parfit, Sam Simpson, Mitch Nevitt, who's looking really good in the VFL, and Tanner Bruin, who absolutely killed it in the VFL on the weekend. So um, any one of those blokes, I'd be happy to have as our medical sub coming in for that one. Uh, I, I hope they all have a good hot, red hot crack if they get it. It'd be nice to see Mitch Nevitt get another game, but in my heart wants um, Sam Simpson to come in, and, and uh, I want Tanner Bruin to be rewarded for his efforts. Uh, I'm, I think Brandon Parfit, if he gets another opportunity, hopefully he'll make the most of it, um, but I not wouldn't be concerned if he spent some time in the VFL again. Um, I think he's definitely a, a best 23 player for this club, but he's just not there at the moment. So um, I hope he gets back there. Uh, there's a couple of players on the fringe still that are playing quite well or, or um, are close to getting a, another game for the Catters. Um, Ollie Dempsey, um, he's pretty close. Uh, Shannon Neal, when he was, if he's fit, shouldn't be too far off getting him a game or two more. Cooper White was in and then he's out again. So um, maybe he didn't show enough or maybe he just had a little taste of it and he's got to go and work hard again. I'm not sure what's happening with him he's injured or I think he might possibly be I don't know if he ran around the VFL the other day um, Jai Clark's just building slowly they're not they're not pressuring that kid into um, playing 20 games in his first AFL season I think we might see a bit more of him similar to what we did with Brian Mize when in his first year he spent most of it in the v, if not all of it in the VFL and um, Alan Christensen as well uh, before he played he was he was spent a year in the VFL too so it's not the worst thing in the world um, it's a good system our VFL system and we usually bring guys in and they're ready to go so uh, the one bloke I'm I'm really keen for a debut and I just don't see enough talk about it really is um, Ted Closey so so maybe the club knows more than we do that maybe they yeah he's great in the, v, the VFL and playing really well but he just maybe he's not showing enough to be able to cut it at that next level um I don't know, but uh, I'd love to see them give them a chance. Um, whether or not they will, I don't know. It's a pretty good list, this Geelong team, uh, after coming off a premiership last year. So who knows? He just might be, unfortunately, uh, struggling. So but have a crack in the VFL. Do your best, and uh, hopefully there'll be a chance in the hoops. But if not, um, if he's playing well enough, he might get a chance at another club. So uh, I do hope Ted Closey, uh, I hope we see him pretty soon because he's done very, very well from that from that first year crop. Probably one of the standouts for me uh, from that group. Uh, now, the Swans have been injury hit. I won't go through their list too much, but uh, they've got heaps of talls out at the moment. They've just they've lost another tall through a hamstring on the weekend. So uh, I don't know if they they might get one player back, um, but they're really going to struggle. And so uh, they've got Tom Papley, who's not a tall, but he's absolutely dominating. Um, six goals in the second half on the weekend, last, the last round. But, uh, you know, if they can't get it to him, uh, if we win the midfield battle... Uh, and uh, suffocate their entries into inside 50 and, uh, you know, get pick off a, a lot of con- um, intercept marks. Thank you, uh, Radigalea and Tom Stewart. We're really hoping you guys can can stop the ball getting to ground and Tom Papley doing his thing because uh, if it doesn't get to Tom Papley, the Swans don't win. It's as simple as that, everyone. It's as simple as that. There's, got, there's nothing else the Swans can do. Look, there'll be a couple other guys that'll bob up. They've got some really handy uh, uh, mid-sized forwards and some midfielders that'll do the job. Um, but if we can win that midfield battle uh, and be rock solid in defence, uh, and you've got uh, uh, Tom Hawkins returning uh, from injury uh, and getting his fitness back, and Jeremy Cameron leading the comp, uh, and and the triple headed beast is back together with Gary Rowan coming back into the side, uh, it's it's looking pretty good for the Catters. So um, so yeah, look, the Swans the Swans will give it a red hot crack, but I think. Um, yeah, I don't think they'll be able to compete. They have been competitive though in recent years down at the Cattery. Uh, they've got a they've won three out of four against us, albeit they haven't played for four years down there. So I don't know if I give that much. I don't look. I don't read into it too much. 
uh, three to four. Look, if it was recent years, yeah, hell, sh- sure I would. But four years ago, who knows? Like this, the teams changed so much in four years. I don't know what it really means. They're just a competitive unit. The Swans. They're, they're well. They're well coached. Uh, they've got a good attitude, good culture. So um, you know, we should be fine. There's a lot of res- a lot of respect between these two sides. There's also a lot of hurt. Uh, clearly, they're they're hurting because we um, smashed them in the grand final. Uh, I'm still pissed off from a few years ago when I flew up to Sydney and, and there was that non free kick or non mark paid to um, Jeremy Cameron for didn't travel 15 meters apparently. Uh, and then uh, then there's the 2005 Nick Bloody Davis moment there, and there's a few others throughout the journey as well. But um, but yeah, definitely a lot of respect between our two clubs, and their supporters are fine. Um, so don't, no issues with them. Not, I wouldn't call it a rivalry because you need a little bit of hate and that kind of stuff for, for a rivalry. But um, they're two, they're probably the two most respected teams in the AFL. But how they go about it and how they run their programs, so. Yeah, pretty good. Now, some of the storylines coming uh, coming into this game. Uh, clearly, it's the flag raising ceremony. Now, make sure if you are getting to the game or if you're planning to watch the game that you are uh, ready to go at about six six forty or thereabouts. Uh, the, the the club's saying if you're at the game, try and be in your seat by about six forty. Uh, we're going to the game. We've got tickets um, in the Peroni Lounge. I think it's called that, the Lounge by Peroni or something like that. Now, so we'll be nice and. Nice and warm in there and uh, refreshed with some uh, beverages before the game starts. So that'll be nice and fun. We, we try to do that once a year. It's a bit of a treat for, for me and my partner, Beck. Uh, we like to do that once a year. Uh, live live well above our means <laughs> one night of the year. Um, but that should be fun. It's also Anzac weekend as well. So there'll be a few uh, events around that and um, some respects paid Uh through through that there's a new Guernsey I don't know I want to get, I don't want to go into the Guernsey stuff too much but other than I, I do hope that some of the money from the sales of the Guernsey is going back to where it needs to go um, not just to the Geelong Cats profits uh, yeah I just I feel a bit weird about that kind of stuff but um, anyway I'll leave that for you to comment if you if you feel so uh, just let me know what you're thinking about that I, I haven't seen anything from the club about it so I don't want to say too much so I don't actually know uh, another storyline coming out of the game is uh, Tom Hawkins is going to be the second most capped cat of all time. He will pass Joel, uh, sorry, not Joel, uh, Corey Enright, uh, too many Corys, uh, Corey Enright with uh, 333 games for the club. A tr- truly remarkable effort from a big man, uh, a heart and soul player of the Geelong Cats. Uh, and I'm really glad he's, well, I can't see why he won't be a one club player. Uh, Tommy, you're a fantastic bloke. Um, You've really, it's, been a, it's been a privilege to see you grow up uh, over the years um, from a cheeky little young kid running on the premiership days with your pants almost half <laughs> down your ankles, showing your red jocks to just the, the man you've become. It's, it's been a joy and it's not over yet. And there's, there's more there's more to come. So uh, he, he potentially will also pass Barry Hall uh, or equal Barry Hall, I should say, on six, uh, 746 goals to be 16th all-time this weekend as well. So um, if, if Tommy's getting close to a bag, make sure you cheer him on. Uh, hopefully he'll get there and, and join Barry Hall there on 16th of all-time. He's probably within touch of 15th as well at some stage this season, so that's a bit of a one. Uh, Tommy's also second all-time in goal assists behind Eddie Betts. I don't think he'll get there unless he um, starts putting together some form and goes again next year. He might get close to it. He's still quite a way behind Eddie Betts. Uh, Probably would need to play another 40 or 50 games to catch him at the rate he's going at the moment. But um, goal assists is a a much more uh, respectable stat uh, or a well-known stat these days. Uh, speaking of goal assists, Grind Myers leads the AFL, mind you. So, if there's any Grind Myers that still any more, any any Grind Myers haters that still exist out there, uh, I'd love to know who you are. Uh, if you're brave enough to let me know who you are in the chat, uh, oh, I just don't like his kicking action. <laughs> uh, he's leading the AFL in goal assists at the moment. As goal himself, <laughs> that'll come. Hopefully, he kicks two or three goals soon. Um, I think he's 0-5 at the moment this year, but um, in terms of his goal assists and his work through the midfield and his link-up work, um, doing great stuff there. So keep it going, Grind. Uh, and lastly, Jezza, just, yeah, will he, uh, will he kick another bag? He's, he's absolutely flying at the moment. Just talking about him winning the Coleman and the Brownlow. Is he going to... Is he going to have an off game this week? Is he going to kick another five? Is he going to extend his lead in the Coleman? I think he's up by four at the moment in the Coleman. So it'd be nice to see him put a bit of distance between him and um, Charlie Kuhn now. Or I think it's Charlie Kuhn now. That might become a second. So, uh, so that'll be good if he can do that, hopefully. My prediction... Uh, I always predict pain. Uh, it's a Mr. T thing for anyone who grew up in the 80s or 
early nineties, whatever. Uh, Cats by forty three points. I think uh, I think we're going to do it very comfortably. Uh, be a bit of a. I don't think it'll be an absolute smashing. I think it'll be around that twenty point mark for majority of the game. Cats will just sort of hold them at arm's length, and then as it comes into the finishing stages, I think the Cats might just pile on two or three more and just um, push that lead a little bit. So, um, so I think that's probably where it'll where it'll sit. So, a bit of a celebration game for the Cats. Uh, we don't lose too many celebration games, too many milestone games, and I, and I can't see that changing uh, this weekend with uh, being back at home again. It'd be nice. Uh, I think we'll be three and three after the win. Of course, we will be. That's just simple maths, but. Um, I don't think we're going to be inside the eight. I think we'll just still be outside the eight. Uh, a very healthy percentage, um, but the top eight's very, very tight. I don't think there's much between. There won't be much between first and eighth on the ladder um, at the end of round six if the results go the way I expect them to. Um, when it comes to Geelong, I'm not too far off it, but um, when it comes to the rest of the competition this year, I'm way off it. I, my tips are shocking, and I forgot to do them when I was on holiday last week, so... I, Got hardly anything, uh, which has just killed my whole season. But anyway, that's okay. That happens. You've got to do your tips. Pro tip, do your tips uh, well in advance. And if you forget to do them, at least you've got something in the system. So whatever. Anyway, that's what that's my thoughts on the ga- on the game. What do you think? What do you know? What, what do you, what do you know? Uh, what do I know? Um, let me know in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Um, and we'll uh, see you on the next one. Go Catters. <laughs>